Ugh, when is boss gonna have his rerun? I've been dying to pull since I missed out when I didn't pull on his past banners. Oh, I still don't have the best Geo Claimer character in my team. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on there. Are you trying to say that Ito is the best Geo Claimer in the game? Are you forgetting that the title now belongs to Demoiselle? Who? Oh, the new Geo character who lost her two closest friends. It's a shame considering that Boss still had Kuki Shinobu as active as ever. Yeah? At least Demoiselle is well respected. What about your boss? Did your nation's Archon ever give a sh about him? Oh, you don't want to go that way. Huh, <laughs> you started this. Suddenly insulting Demoiselle like that? What, can't handle the truth? I bet if boss was in Poisson, he could've saved even your Demoiselle sidekicks. With his noodle arms? Might as well give up and let the primordial water dissolve us. Besides, if Demoiselle was the one leading your gang, it could even go on par with the Yashiro Commission. Silence! Well, well, if it isn't about the two Geo Claymore DPS characters who lead their respective groups. One being a defense scaling damage dealer who leads an infamous gang in Inazuma, while the other being a crystallized DPS rich auntie who leads a helpful organization in Fontaine. Though I believe that this is not mainly about comparing the two in terms of meta or just their character personalities. But if you think about it, they do share a lot of similarities. Both are leaders. Ito is the boss and Navia is the president. Both have a nickname for us. Ito calls us compadre and Navia calls us partner. Both are easygoing and fun in their respective ways. And they are also both the type of friend you definitely want to have since they always got your back. But the way they manage and lead their respective organizations, how they interact with other people, and how they fit with their roles in their respective regions are all different. That's why I thought of an interesting question. What if Navia and Ito switch places? Navia would become the boss of the Arataki gang, and Ito would become the president of the Spina di Rosula. Just a quick note that I'm only factoring how the characters have been as presented in the present events of the game. I didn't include the respective character backstories because my takes would have taken a more complex turn with the canon logical inconsistencies. So to begin with, I believe there would be quite a couple changes in the buildup of their respective regions if they were to swap. For instance, if Navia were to lead the Arataki gang from the start instead of Ito, the gang could have been part of the commissioners, either by introducing a fourth commission or replacing an existing commission. Why I brought up the possibility of the fourth commission is due to their specific sets of responsibilities that don't seem to overlap with the other commissions. Knowing Navia's role in Fontaine and what she has done for Poisson specifically, they would be the sole faction that would take care of the industrial matters as well as infrastructure and investigations. The Tenryo Commission mainly takes care of law enforcement and the military. The Kanjo Commission takes care of finances, diplomatic, and bureaucratic affairs. And the Yashiro Commission takes care of cultural preservation, celebrations, and practices. Maybe the Yashiro Commission would be a close bet for the infrastructure part, but their duties are emphasized on their cultural responsibility. The Tenryo Commission is also likely to share the investigative duties through Heizo, but honestly Heizo is just one asset to the Tenryo Commission, and as a whole it doesn't necessarily specialize on such matters. Navia leading the Arataki gang as Inazuma's possible fourth commission could also be a pivotal change as she and the gang could take involvement in an attempt to rehabilitate the Mikage furnace without Xavier and the Traveler. Another thing to add is that the environment of the Tarasuna, or at least the nearby vicinities around the Mikage furnace, might undergo reconstruction. You might wonder, how is infrastructure duties tied with Navia herself? To answer that, Navia has a natural abundance of connections and she is also capable of making a couple of connections herself. This allowed her to rebuild Poisson and contribute to the rehabilitation of the heavily affected areas in Fontaine after the prophesied flood subsided. Even outside the Spina di Rosula, she has a varying wide array of connections among those in Poisson and Love Sandra. So to bring it here, we could also assume that there would be a couple of workers Navia would be in contact with given all these infrastructure responsibilities. Since I also said that they could be Inazuma's fourth commission, the Arataki gang would end up with more willing and active people given Navia's leadership. The blacksmiths may also have established ties with the Arataki gang due to their industrial responsibilities. On the other side of the map, we get Ito replacing Navia as the president of the Spina di Rosula, which in my opinion would end up extremely silly. 
As we all know, Fontaine has a lot of strongly established security factions with the Marshals A Phantom Melusines, the Gardemex, Chavras Special Security and Surveillance Patrol, the Masson Gardenage, Risley's appointed wardens in the fortress, and possibly many more. Not only they are strict enough against troublemakers, it would also be easier for Ito and the Spina di Rosula to get in trouble themselves. As far as the most recent Beetle Battle Bootcamp event is concerned, we get to know how Kuki Shinobu is the one doing all the works in regards to their gang's funds. Ito, on the other hand, indulges too much in the pleasure of his own leisures and pastimes such as the recent Beetle Battling. Considering the contrasting lifestyle between the court of Fontaine and even the Flav Sandra and even Poisson, the Spina di Rosula under Ito's leadership would have a lot harder time managing with their insufficient funds. In canon, Spina di Rosula is a very prominent organization throughout Fontaine. But if Ito were to become its president, then the Spina might end up fading into irrelevance or if not, they might earn an infamous reputation in the entire nation of Fontaine. The Steambird is surely an established media source for the Fontanians, so many people would be aware enough of the troubling rackets the Spina would have under Ito. If I'm gonna give my thoughts, the most likely thing to happen if we consider Canon Fontaine is According to the judgment of the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal, Mr. Arataki Ito is guilty. Yeah, I can't really see any other possibility for Ito here. If we, the good guy Tabibita Sang, almost got arrested just by bringing Paimon within Fontaine's borders, then Ito would break the records in speedrunning Nouvellet saying the holy line of the judgment of the Oratrice Mechanique Denali's Cardinal. There are, however, many possibilities for his charges. Considering there are some unusual Fontaine laws, it's possible that Ito will get charged for noise pollution, civil deviances, misconduct in the court, unauthorized hosting of events, and offenses against authority. Now, apart from those changes for the two, it's also important to add that both the Arataki Gang and the Spina di Rosula have characters filling in the second-in-command position in their respective organizations. For the Arataki Gang, it's Kuki Shinobu, and for the Spina di Rosula, it's Silver and Malus. Both had crucial parts to play in the story so far with Shinobu taking responsibility for Ito during the Bosatius quest in the chasm and Silver and Malus being the reliable sidekicks for Navia for the majority of the Fontaine Archon quest. If, in those times, Shinobu was with Navia instead during the chasm quest and Silver and Malus were with Ito during the Fontaine Archon quest, the story interplay, dynamics, and interactions would end up quite interesting to explore. Think of the Fontaine Archon quest first. Suppose that Kalas' involvement remains unchanged even if it's Ito being his successor. Silver and Melus would be the mastermind and are the ones to do the behind-the-scenes work. Ito, being the headstrong type of guy, would have no issue doing the frontline work and have no problem defending himself and the people around him. I mean, the man wouldn't give a bother about risk and he might just brawl against the encircling Gardamex while protecting us, without the help of Silver and Melus and even without the help of Corinth. Though the part where Marcel's involvement would complicate things, along with the synth production and his trial, I think the unraveling of the primordial water would have taken a different starting point in development. The stakes for the Spina di Rosula would likely not be as high as it would be with Navia because Ito could just handle the confrontations connected to the serial disappearances case. But the case might unfold through a situation where the mass production of synth is already underway. And I believe that if Ito is the Spina di Rosula's president during Act 2 of the Fontaine Archon Quest, the development could progress in a way that the Spina might get in a turmoil of internal strife first. There is also the possibility that they might get involved with the synth production since Marcel could take advantage of the conferee's link to the Spina di Rosula for the synth production. So possibilities would be that the plot would unravel if Ito encounters something suspicious and different in his day-to-day -day proceedings. Similarly, if there's a dispute or commotion that may happen with the involvement of the guards, the synth products, and the Spina, those are also the possible openings for Ito to push the story forward. Silver and Malus would play a major role here as they will be the ones doing the investigative work regarding the case at hand. Due to Ito's carefree personality even towards his gang, he would likely not be paying attention to the serious matters involving the Spina. If ever, I could see Ito having all sorts of banter with the Melusines. I could also see Silver and Malus going through a hard time kind of babysitting Ito. In the court, Nuvillet might get strict on Ito because of his rowdy behavior, and not to mention the fact that he might almost always get into a heated argument with Farina. It could also be likely that either Silver or Malus is the one to charge and put Marcel in trial. As for the next big plot involvement, which is Masquerade of the Guilty, 
we knew that Poisson was what triggered the sequence of events leading to the prophecy resolution at the end, but if Ito took Navia's place in facing the crisis of Poisson, it would likely be that Silver and Malus would still end up alive with Ito being able to rescue more people. The reason I said this was that Ito's recklessness has been shown to be an asset of his in his own story quest in the Bosatius Chasm quest where he cleared the path for the crew to proceed and to briefly revisit his story quest, his same recklessness allowed him to save his friend. With that being said, his innate strength that could just affect a smaller scale situation might end up changing the starting narrative that leads to Farina's trial. What could initiate the turn of events could instead be the recurrence of tremors as felt in the fortress of Meropeed. Since the knave is also playing a crucial role in the aversion of the crisis, we might still have to retrieve the stone slates from the ruins she and the other Fatui henchmen discovered. The crisis in Poisson would alert the entire nation, and while Nivellet talks things with Farina regarding their retrieved stone slates, more crises would occur in other parts of Fontaine. It's also worth noting that it's been repeatedly implied that the prophecy is already fixed. So eventually, as more crises happen, more people panic, and the more people panic, the more there would be demands that Nivellet would have on Farina, which just leads to the trial regardless. But these are just the notable ones I could see if Ito switched with Navia in the Fontaine Archon Quest. Now, if Navia was the boss of the Arataki gang during the Inazuma Archon Quest and the Bosatius Chasm Quest, she could also end up being a pivotal character. I did mention a while ago how Navia leading the Arataki gang could lead to the organization having a role as important as the three commissions, and if there's anything being accentuated in the Inazuma Archon quest, it's the concept of leadership. When we first arrived to Rito, we were introduced into the affairs of the Kanjo Commission where at some point we had to deliver letters. The daughter of the Hiragi clan served as the commissioner's leader and played a part in progressing the story so that we could continue to Narukami Island. Then we have the Yashiro Commission who had Ayato as their head. However, in the story, it was Ayaka who assisted us on his behalf. But still, Ayato had a subtle contribution behind the lines and was the one responsible for the mobilization of the Shu Matsuban. Lastly, we have the Tenryo Commission which is the extension of the Raiden Shogun's force thanks to Kujo Sara's leadership. Then, of course, we couldn't forget about the Raiden Shogun herself as the Archon Quest revolved around her oppressive leadership. So, if we look back at the role Navia could play as she replaces Ito as the Arataki Gang's leader, we could notice some contrast that could really affect the story. What sets Navia apart from Ito is that she takes her responsibilities seriously and often acts on initiative, as you can see with how relevant she was in the entire Fontaine Archon Quest. She wouldn't be the kind to get into petty fights and become infamous. With that, I don't see her getting under the radar of Kujo Sara and the Tenryo Commission due to her responsible demeanor. If ever, they could end up being on the same league or perhaps their respective groups could end up collaborating at some point, so I don't see Navia getting stripped of her vision by the Vision Hunt decree. I was also thinking of bringing up the Rito portion of the quest because it already had subtle hints on the internal meddling of the Fatui that's worthy of investigation. At some point, we also had to investigate what was going on within the Tenryo Commission. Going lengths where we had to set up a fireworks distraction and have Sayo infiltrate their headquarters to retrieve the necessary documents. While it was initiated by the Yashiro Commission, since we mentioned that Navia could undertake investigative responsibilities, she could also have the Shu Matsuban under her instead. We could then say that she and the Arataki gang could have their field day in regards to the task. Canonically, the Shumatsuban is under the Yashiro Commission, but if the Shumatsuban would go under Navia, the Yashiro Commission could instead be closely linked to the Grand Narukami Shrine. So, what I can see if this is the case is that the Yashiro Commission would begin coordinating with Yae Miko and the Traveler regarding their next few steps, possibly pertaining to a plan to attempt to enter the Plane of Euthymia or speeding up the Resistance's reinforcements. Inazuma's Archon Quest was fairly short, and it's one of some clear possibilities I could imagine if Navia was the leader of the Arataki gang. However, if we'll look back at Navia's role in the Fontaine Archon Quest again, we could get some ideas based on how she kept the sequence of events going. She was the one who investigated the dismissed case regarding her father Kalas and even confronted Nouvellet in regards to the past situation and his ideals of justice. She was also the one who reached out to us when we were doing our investigations as Lenny's defense. 
So I could just say that during the part where we are dealing with the three people who had their visions taken, this could be perceived as one of those situations where Navia could come in. As I said about her capability to build connections, this could be a starting point for her involvement as she is also known to act out of her sympathy and her initiative to help other people. So maybe I could see an outcome in any situation where at some point, she would have to confront the Raiden Shogun herself in her ideals of eternity. Aside from the Inazuma Archon quest, we also had the Bosatius Chasm quest to talk about. I mentioned a while ago that Ito had a slight relevance when he punched through a wall to create a path for the crew deep within the depths of the chasm. But overall, I think the entire quest was made possible thanks to Ito's part of being in the quest. Because if it was Navia to replace him in that situation, it would not be possible since there would be no butting heads with Yelan which caused their platform to go crumbling down. Ito at that time was persistent in thanking Yanfei but Navia wouldn't go that far as to becoming headstrong against the concerns of others. I think what's better to cover is the secret chamber where each of the characters were exposed to their fears. This would have exposed Navia to the reality of what happened to her father. So those were the possible changes I could think of in the featured stories if they were to switch. And to summarize it, Ito replacing Navia would lower the stakes in the Fontaine Archon quest while increasing the comic relief, and Navia replacing Ito would put more depth in the Inazuma Archon quest. But just to add, there would also be fun tidbits surrounding the character interactions and possible events in their switch. Like, I would think Heizo would be a much more relevant character with Navia being in Inazuma because they are both investigators in their own ways. Similarly, Navia could also have ties with the Bantan Sango Detective Agency. Her dynamic with Kuki Shinobu would possibly resemble Silver and Meluse. Consequently, Kuki would have less headache in taking the entire gang's responsibility on her back as she gets to work with a capable leader this time. And I would also mention that A likes sweets, and I assume Ayato does too because of his Boba Tea Idol animation, so I would say that they would be among the characters who couldn't get enough of Navia's macarons. In the same way, I think it might end up as quite a popular dessert in Inazuma, possibly becoming more popular than the tri-colored Dango. Inazuma events with her might feature cooking macarons just like her web event, and there would be an event similar to Sumeru's certain minigame event where you have to find out what happened based on your deduction of the given narrative. As for Ito, I am confident enough to say that it would be highly possible that Ito will have a duel with Glorin. They might even have the same dynamic as Ito had with Sara, only without the Tengu sentiments. It would also be likely that Ito gets to spar with Risley in the Pancration Ring. At this point, if Ito is likely to be given the guilty verdict, all the more that he's likely to live a long while in the Fortress of Merupi. Either way, I think even Risley would find Ito a serious trouble. For some reasons, I get the feeling that Ito would end up being fascinated by Lily's magic performances. On the flip side, Farina could either be entertained or deeply annoyed by his antics. As for Nouvellet, as long as it's not within court vicinities or not in a trial situation, he would see Ito in a similar way that Ayato does, since both of them are chill by default and Ayato didn't really have any problem with Ito calling him my bro in his voice lines. Ito might also end up being afraid of Siege Queen when he begins his life in the fortress. Since Fontaine has no only Kabuto as its regional specialties, his featured Beetle Battle Bootcamp events would instead make use of the subdetection units, but the gameplay would still end up pretty much the same. There might also be a combat event that could take place in the Pancration Ring. I could also see a TCG event being held and a drum along event to be featured in one of Fontaine's major festival events. And that wraps up all my thoughts. I intended to not include Navia's and Ito's story quest in depth for this because 1. I haven't done Navia's story quest yet, and 2. Adding more story and lore bits would complicate the topic. I didn't intend to keep things aligned to the canon so take all my statements as a grain of salt since at the end of the day I just explored on the what ifs. If you have your own opinions, thoughts, personal additions, and even discussions you'd like to share regarding the topic in this what if, please feel free to leave a comment down below. I will start planning out my next what ifs through a poll in my community tab that I'll make after publishing this what if video. So if you want to suggest an idea, please go check it out and leave a comment down as well. I hope you all enjoyed this what if video, and if you do, please consider leaving a like and subscribe for more following what if contents. May you all then at least be Oratrice Mechanique then at least Cardinal, and I'll see you all in the next video. Au revoir. According to the judgment of the Oratrice Mechanique Danalise Hodina, 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 Oratrice Mechanique Danalise Cardinal.